patient and case selection. This module will cover a range of topics, including the evaluation of patients as candidates for aligner therapy, the selection of the proper case, cases of variable difficulty, such as simple cases for initiators, moderate cases for users with experience, and severe cases for advanced users will also be discussed. The module will then end with the explanation of tooth movements and examples of different cases treated with Eon aligners. First, we will elaborate on patient selection. Are they for everyone? Eon aligners are for patients looking for discrete treatment that has less adverse impact on their social activities. Notably, they should have good oral hygiene and a stable periodontal status. Any active disease in the teeth or periodontium should be resolved before the treatment. The patients should be motivated and committed to the treatment to see the result they want, as the aligner should be worn for at least 22 hours per day and only taken out when eating and or cleaning the aligner. A patient that cannot commit to frequent clinical visits is also a viable candidate. Patients should be encouraged to read and research about aligners. The full treatment plan should be explained to the patient. Realistic expectations should be set, and any concerns should be addressed. Secondly, we will cover case selection. Case selection depends mostly on the doctor's experience. The initial cases selected should be more or less simple in nature with mild discrepancies. Successfully treating simple cases is a great indicator to start the next category of cases and so on. To properly assess the difficulty of the case, a thorough problem list should be written to cover arch width and length, vertical, transverse, and anteroposterior discrepancies. Now, how does one determine case complexity? Patients' conditions are determined from clinical and radiographic examination and the aforementioned problem list. The patient's and doctor's treatment objectives, in addition to the doctor's experience and training level, also work to set the extent of complexity. Simple cases for initiators include mild crowding and spacing of less than 3 mm, narrow arches up to 2 mm, mild deep bite, increased overjet of 1 to 2 mm, anterior open bite of 1 to 2 mm, and relapse cases. Moderate cases for average users include spacing and crowding of 3 to 6 mm, anterior dental crossbite, moderate deep bite, increased overjet of 2 to 4 mm, anterior open bite of 2 to 4 mm, rotation around 10 to 45 degrees, molars uprighting, Lower incisors extraction, end-on-end -end class II molar relationships, and pre-surgical alignment. Severe cases for advanced users include extraction cases, multiple missing teeth, posterior crossbite, bilateral where multiple teeth are involved, severe tooth rotations, and full class two or class three relationships. Tooth movements include crown tipping, buccolingual translation, mesiodistal translation, torque, rotation, intrusion, and extrusion. We will be discussing each movement separately. Crown tipping or angulation is changing the angle of the long axis of a tooth in a mesiodistal direction. The hinge is in the root apex. For initiators, up to 10 degrees is easily done. More experienced users can acceptably achieve more than 10 degrees. Incisors have the most predictable mesiodistal tipping in comparison to the canines, premolars, and molars. Minimal degree of angulation can be done with the aligner alone. However, it is better to add attachment on the teeth to ensure the predictability of the movement. Translation is the horizontal bodily movement of the tooth in the alveolar bone. Translational movements exist in a multitude of directions, buccolingual or mesiodistal. Let's first start with translation in a buccolingual direction, 
further subdivided into proclination of anterior teeth and expansion of posterior teeth. Initiators can achieve up to 4 mm of proclination, and experienced users could do more than 4 mm. This is usually done to create space. Expansion of posterior teeth. Initiators may do up to 3 mm, and experienced users can do more. The movement results in an increase in the circumference of the arch and creation of space. Attachments are used for better grip of the teeth and force application. Secondly, translation in a mesiodistal direction is subdivided into distalization and mesialization. Distalization is the movement of the tooth away from the midline. Achievable dimensions for initiators are up to 2 mm, and for the experienced, up to 4 mm. Mesialization is the movement of the tooth towards the midline. Initiators are recommended to do up to 2 mm, and the more experienced, up to 3 mm. We recommend using elastics for both mesiodistal movements, depending on the case and the teeth to be moved. Minimal mesiodistal translation with proclination or expansion can happen without the use of any auxiliaries. Torque involves changing the angle of the long axis of the tooth in a buccolingual direction. The hinge is in the center of the tooth. Initiators may appropriately do up to 10 degrees, while the more experienced up to 15 degrees. Torque enhancers for incisors are sometimes recommended to aid the movements. Rotation is the movement of the tooth along its long axis. Initiators may rotate incisors up to 30 degrees, canines or premolars up to 25 degrees, and molars up to 20 degrees. Experienced doctors may rotate incisors up to 50 degrees, canines or premolars up to 40 degrees, and molars up to 30 degrees. Rotation depends on the tooth and the degree of rotation. Incisors are easier to rotate due to their flat anatomy in comparison to the round premolars and molars. For rotations, attachments should be used to facilitate and have better tracking of the movement. Notably, space should be available around the tooth to correct its rotation. Intrusion is the movement of the tooth towards its socket. Initiators can perform the movement in anterior teeth up to 1 to 1.5 millimeters and posterior teeth up to 0.5 mm. Meanwhile, experienced doctors may intrude anterior teeth up to 2 mm and posterior teeth up to 1 mm. Attachments are not needed for teeth being intruded. However, they are needed to be placed on teeth adjacent to those being intruded. Intrusion also needs space, as the teeth are wider in the incisal or occlusal part. Extrusion is the movement of the tooth away from its socket. Initiators can extrude anterior teeth up to 2 mm and posterior teeth up to 0.5 mm. For experienced doctors, extrusion of up to 2.5 mm in anterior teeth and up to 1 mm in posterior teeth is achievable. Teeth that require alignment should have that planned first, then plan the extrusive movement. Evidence showed extrusion of incisors to be accurate. This is a summary of all the tooth movements that we've just discussed. Conclusively, we will showcase examples with variable severity treated with Eon aligners, starting with a mild case. Observe the mild crowding in both arches and the midline shift. Watch how the midline shifting and the crowding are being resolved. Finally, these are the before and after photos. You can see that the treatment objectives have been met. This is an example of a case moderate in severity. It showcases moderate crowding with some difficult rotations of the teeth. Observe the progression of the case. Here are the before and after photos. The crowding was resolved and the rotations were corrected. And our last example is going to be a severe case.
It shows a class 2 case treated with the extraction of the upper first premolars. Notice the sequential movements progressing. Finally, here is the before and after. We have a class 1 canine relationship and the extraction space is fully closed. Thank you for watching.